All right, Shalom. Give it all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem, with Kakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone for teaching this truth that's gone all around the earth. Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. Back at it once again. Okay. And here we are, one more week, still here in Babylon the Great, aka the USA, aka Sodom, right? Spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt, spiritual Basra, Nineveh, so on and so on and so forth, right? Here once again to preach the downfall of this wicked kingdom run by Esau Edom from all across the earth, okay? But particularly here in Babylon the Great, where you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native and Seminole Indians, you are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, which are also scattered all across the earth, in which you may come out looking like some of the other nations, whether you be over in Europe, or South America, or in the Caribbean islands, or you're in, you're in England, or London, or Australia, Canada, okay? You make up the 12 tribes of the children of Israel scattered all across the earth pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy, all right? And as we see what's in the news today and what's been going on the last week and which is the flavor of the week, if you will, okay, is the fact that the Lord is pouring out judgment all right and it's a steady stream so far because as i saw this morning i did a lesson last night yeah last night on uh, the recovery efforts of some of the people who perished after that tornado right from last week down in kentucky no sooner than i got done with that went back out there on the internet to see what more rappers being killed right well, one died, but nonetheless, that's still judgment. And that was Kango Kid from UTFO, and then some other rapper this morning that was on the uh, festival with Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube, and them got stabbed to death, okay? And right now, it's not a good time to be a rapper, all right? Because that, that whole genre is nothing but wickedness. It's a death culture. It's dark, it's demonic, okay? And it's filled with nothing but devilment, all right? If you will. So it's not a real good time to be a rapper. The elder brother, GMS, Bible teacher, SC07, the elder, Manat Zakba, down there in South Carolina, right? But he's on the move right now, but he did a lesson on... Uh, the Ephraimite uh, music producer who died in a, in a plane crash, right? Okay? So anything having to do with this wicked music, it looks like that's a, that's a pretty big snare. Okay? So all those who are involved in it, I think you ought to start thinking twice about what you're doing. Okay? The Heavenly Father is not pleased with that genre of so-called music. All right? And the judgment of the Lord is going forth. And all that we see is his judgments, okay? So it is be a wise thing for you, you hear this word. Don't turn a deaf ear, but repent and come out of the ways of the world, all right? And understand the true names of the Heavenly Father and his Son and come back to your heritage, all right? At least you be destroyed. Okay, that's the sentiment for right now, you know? But okay, we know Jake, Jake hard-headed, right? Even the Most High said that, okay? As the old folks say, you don't believe fat meat greasy, okay? You're gonna wait until you get to that point of, of, of sure destruction and then try to repent. It's gonna be too late for you, okay? But nonetheless, the men of the Lord, okay, 
those that are steadfastly doing their very best in this wicked place and trying to please the Lord with doing the work of making a call to you, okay, who make their lives, what, a living sacrifice, all right, to do the will of the Lord, and that is to try to help you, O house of Israel, right? As the scripture says, paraphrasing it, why will you die? To keep you from being destroyed, to warn you and to tell you about this book, to tell you about the Heavenly Father, okay? To tell you about repentance, okay? This is 1 Peter chapter 4. And uh, I'll just start at uh, verse 14. And it reads, If ye be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of the Most High resteth upon you. Okay? So people don't like the preacher. They don't like the teacher. They don't like the one who's screaming at them and telling them that they're going the wrong way. Okay? We are reproached to you because you want to stay in the world. All right? But nonetheless, we're happy to do the work of the Lord. Start at 14 again. If you be a reproach for the name of Hamashiach, Hamashiach, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of the Most High resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. That's right. Okay? You Israelites out there, you hate the word of the Lord. You hate the idea that you can no longer be an Instagram model and have these wicked ass, treacherous men who would ever feel the professionalism that they're in fly you all across the world back and forth so they can look at your behind and you can do other things, okay? You're all out there putting your business in the street. You here, you there, you eating this, you eating that. Gucci bag this and Gucci bag that. You know, Yeezy shoes and this and that and the third, okay? Showing off your lust for the things of the world. I'm talking to you, you women out there, okay? Not the sisters that repented, but you women of the world. You Israelite sisters, you, you Hispanic women too, as they call you, right? You Latin tribes out there, you, you women, you flying around the world doing the same thing, wearing all your, got all your junk out, right? Showing off, trying to get what? Uh, 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 likes and, 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 and trying to build your, build your, as they like to say, your brand, right? So that you can get money out of people, right? So you, so, so you can live a lustful life. That's what you after, okay? And, and some of you out there, you tricking behind the scenes, right? You trying to catch a professional ball player slipping and get knocked up by him so you can get you a check for the, for the next 18 years. Yeah, we know the game. We know what you're doing, all right? That's what you're doing. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a, as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, which is talking about the Israelites, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify the Most High on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Lord or the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Right, those of you who refuse to repent and you continue on to break the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, which makes you a sinner, okay? That makes you a sinner. How in the world do you think you're gonna make it on your own merit? It takes the Savior 
to get beyond this point. And if those who believe in Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, right? And we barely gonna make it because we don't know if we're gonna make it until we get to the end, until we actually see. If we scarcely be saved, how do you think you gonna make it? If you decide that you gonna stay in the world, well really that's a spiritual thing, okay? But you decide you gonna stay in the world. How do you think you gonna make it? You're slated for destruction. Point blank. We we'll read that again, verse 17. For the time has come that the judgment must begin at the house of the Most High, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? That's the question that Peter is raising in that verse, okay? How do you think you're going to make it, okay? If you don't obey this gospel, And I know, you know, people look at it. Those on the outside, they look at it. And you don't understand what's going on. I know that. Okay? But here's the thing, you're not trying to understand. Okay? Because the things of the world are more appealing to you. Not this truth. Okay? And you have yet to renew your mind, right? Through the spirit, your, your mind has to be renewed. You have to be changed, right? We talk about this every week. And by now, if you watch these videos of all the brothers who are preaching all across the earth, a light has got to go off one way or the other. You just gonna make a conscious decision. You know what? And I believe that there's some out there that do that. They telling the truth, but I just love to, 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 to be wicked, basically is what you're saying. So you can't ever see yourself doing the right thing and trying to renew your mind, right? Through the spirit. You're not praying for wisdom. You're not praying for understanding. You love to do the wickedness, but your mind through the spirit has to be changed. So let's read that. This is Romans chapter 12, starting at the very top and it reads, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of the most high that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Right, so when you come into this truth, and you believe on your how about Shem, your how Shai, you make your body a living sacrifice. You sacrifice in almost every aspect of your life, okay? You sacrifice your time, right? You sacrifice money, you sacrifice things, okay? You sacrifice being around your family, you sacrifice being around, if you're a man, your wife, if you're a sister, your husband, if he doesn't understand, and even your children, okay? You sacrifice everything that you have for this truth, okay? And there are too many that are unwilling to do it. Two thirds of you will refuse to do it. Again, though that be a spiritual thing, because when it all boils down, the Lord don't want you anyway. Okay, that's why that's why that that thought comes into your head not to do it. All right. Verse verse one again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of the Most High. You see? 
and that's what you'll have to do. Okay? That mind has got to be renewed. You've got to come out of the ways of Babylon the Great, which is America. No matter how many of them try to tell you, oh, America is not mentioned in the Bible. Yes, it is. They just don't understand what it is. Okay? Let's go on. You make yourself a sacrifice. We'll go to we'll go to Peter, right? When he was talking to the Savior, okay, and asked him about that. We're giving up everything to believe in this truth and to and to do everything you say to do. What we gonna have? What we gonna what we gonna get? Right? So let's go to that. See, because that's the natural thing for a person to say. What's in it for me? That's a natural thing, okay? Now we go to uh, Matthew 19, and then we look at how that young man was all distraught over what Yahweh Shai told him about getting rid of his stuff, right? Because he was rich. And we'll just jump in Oh, you know what? We got time. Let's read it. Let's go to uh, verse. Let's just go in at uh, verse 16. All right, so this is 19 and 16, St. Matthew 19, 16. And it reads, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So we're talking about eternal life. So that's the question this young man asked, Yahweh Shai, okay? And he, Yahweh Shai, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Stop right there because this seems to be a running theme, you know, all of these years and in our lifetime today, and those that have been in church and grew up in church, they tried to tell you, you're not under the law, you under grace, right? Which is almost like telling you, you have a license to sin now, all right? Which is wrong, okay? They could never be more wrong. Verse 17 again, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he, verse 18, he said unto him, which, the young man asked Yahweh Shah, which one? Yahweh Shah said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, okay? Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, right? You can find these in the law, right? And when you think about this, and you apply it today, you think about all these people, particularly I'm speaking to you two-thirds out there, all right? Or really... If you can receive this and you repent and change, okay, then you were meant to hear it and receive it. And two thirds would just dug their ears will be their ears are uncircumcised, so they can't understand it and hear it. Okay? But if you hear it and understand it, then that could mean you potentially are part of the elect if you can receive it. Okay? But getting back to my point, you think about today, and that's what people do, right? And in particular, going back to these women of our nation who are foul and wicked, right? Who are rebellious, okay? Who are greedy, 
who are nasty. All right? You think they don't lie? Here it tells you not to lie. You think they don't steal? Yeah, they steal. Right? Trying to play dudes and taking their credit cards and all that kind of old stuff. Same thing, right? So this is a wicked, wicked time to be living in and we got wicked people of our nation. Now that's not to say that the dudes are ex exempt. No, the brothers in Israel, you part of the two thirds, you just as wicked as the women. Okay? And the judgment of the Lord is going to start taking you out. It's going to start taking out a whole bunch of people in various, numerous different ways, man, for being wicked. You're going to see more plane crashes. You're going to see more uh, 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 shootings, right? You're going to see more of your so-called black excellence celebrities getting snatched up, coming up dead, whatever the case may be. They're children. Okay? The Most High is not playing around. This is, this is real serious right now. Okay? You're seeing it on a daily basis. How much more do you need you know, to convince you? What, what else is it going to take? Now, I'm not talking to the believers, obviously, right? I'm not talking about to the brothers and sisters. I'm talking about just in general, you know, as we look at this thing and then those who may be listening for the first time, okay? So let's get back to verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? The Howard shall say, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 20 The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? The Howard shall say unto him, unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me you see but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions right and that's how these people are today extremely covetous covetous people in the house of israel okay and you are going to be judged by the lord at least she repent. Okay? Let's go further. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, verse 23. Then said Yahweh unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. And we explained that once before about the camel going through the eye of a needle. Of course, people took it literal, didn't understand. And even if you read it in church, your pastor didn't explain it to you, right? Because people's vision, you know, they see things. A lot of people learn because they, they, have, they, they have to see things in a vision light, right? They have to see it, imagine it. They're thinking of a big fat camel with a hump trying to go through the eye of a sewing needle. It's, that's not what it's talking about, right? It's talking about a passageway in those old uh, walls and, and uh, buildings that they had way back in those days. A passageway where the camel would have, a, uh, obviously he's got a hump on his back, not to mention all the stuff that they piled on him, and the camel would have to struggle to get down low so he could go through the archway. That's what it's speaking of, right? And it was a difficult thing for a camel to do, okay? All right. 
So let's go on. Um, verse 25, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed saying, who then can be saved? And But Yahweh beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with the most high, all things are possible. Then Peter, Zalakia, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? See, Peter saying, okay, well, I mean, you know, it's hard for a rich man to get in and we done gave up everything, you know. And I imagine that many of them had possessions. They, they, they had a business, right? They were fishermen. They had equipment. They had boats. They had nets, right? There's some value in that. They were making money doing it, okay? They had wives and children and so forth. And they forsook it all to follow the master. So, so, so Peter, and I love Peter because Peter is so natural, you know? When you look at Peter, you see the example of of how people naturally are. Inquisitive, Peter was fiery, he got frustrated, Peter wanted to fight, Peter cursed. You know, he was so natural, you know, when you're looking at it, when you're reading it, okay? And Peter stepped up, he wasn't scared. He was like, what, 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 what we gonna get? Okay, we doing all of this, man, what's happening? What, what, What's in it for us? You see? Verse uh, 28, And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye have, which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Right? It doesn't mention any of the other tribes. Right? Edom, Ishmael, Moab, Ammon, okay? It, it doesn't mention any of the other nations of the people. It only talks about Israel, okay? Verse 28 again, And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. You see? So that's what you get, all right? To follow the lamb wherever soever he goes, all right? Now, you hear the call of the man, the trumpet, who are preaching out in public every week, okay? All over the earth. You can choose, you can elect, okay, I guess you would say, that you don't, you ain't gonna listen, then don't. No skin off our nose. Okay? But you're gonna see heavy, heavy judgment. It's all throughout the scriptures. The Lord sends a warning, he sends his men to warn you, right? And these other people, you know, they don't want you to know the truth. They're, they're not concerned about you knowing the truth. But you have to you're gonna have to change, man. Okay? And get this truth while you can.
Let me see now. Let me go over to. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go over to Isaiah five. Okay. We'll read some of Isaiah five. All right. Let's jump in at verse. Uh, see here. Let's jump in at verse 11. This is Isaiah 5 and verse 11. It's, it reads, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they might so like you, that they may follow strong drink that continue until night till wine inflame them. And the harp and the vial and the tabret and the pipe and the wine are in their feast, but they regard not the work of the Lord, Yahweh, neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend into it and the mean man shall be brought low and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled but the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahweh of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and the most high that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a cart rope. Yeah, you just keep on doing it, keep on piling it on and bringing it with you. Just dragging it with you in your life, right? Refusing to do right. As it said, you have no knowledge. All right. Verse 19, that say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And you see that going on today, right? You have to remember that the scriptures are many fold, right? It applies to a lot of different things in, in your life currently today, not just talking about way back then. You see, and you got many people today that call evil good and good evil. Okay? And when you take the good and turn it evil, or you take evil and try to make good out of it, you're standing in a prime position to get judged. Verse 20 again, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Yeah, you got everything, and that's how it is in Babylon the Great. And all over the earth, that these wicked Edomites are running everything, they've taken everything and turned it upside down. Okay? Everything good that the Lord did, they want to make it like it's an evil thing, right? For example, the Lord made man, he made woman. Man and woman are supposed to be together. They're supposed to multiply, right? But now here comes Esau, Edom, right? The devil of the years and says, you don't have to do what God says. You can do whatever you want. You're a free being. You're a free thinker. Well, lady, if you don't want to be a woman anymore, just come see me and I'll make you a man. You see? Okay? They, they, they have taught these people, especially here in Babylon, and I saw it for myself. This was some years back. And oddly enough, thinking about it, now that I think about it, 
I was in Phoenix, in the mall. I can't think of that, that big mall up there in Scottsdale, me and my wife. And that was the first time I ever saw it. This was some years back. I'm trying to think of when it was. Uh, I can't I can't recall. Let's just say it was 10 years ago. Might might be around in there somewhere. That was the first time I ever saw parents who had a young child. He was a little boy and they had him dressed like a girl in the mall. Right? Now, from the looks of it, they look like they might have been eating mice, but it doesn't make any difference. The point is that that kind of nonsense comes from them. Okay? And here you got these damn nigga celebrities. Uh, what's that girl's name? Uh, Alicia Keys trying to paint her son's fingernails. Right? What that happened last year or the year before last, whatever it was. Wicked shit like that. The Most High gonna put hell on all of them. Okay? Verse 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahushai of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. And that's what these niggas are doing today. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, you native and Seminole Indians, you're living in this world. You cast the Lord's word away. You cast his laws away. And you're living as if you think that the Most High is really not going to call this back. Like he's, he's really going to allow you to get away with it. The Most High is going to put judgment on a lot of motherfuckers out there. Excuse my German. Okay? And you're starting to see it open up, but you're gonna see it more and more and more as we go further along. And you won't be able to cry that you didn't know. Okay? Now again, brothers and sisters, it ain't, it ain't to you, but that's our message, right? Our message is to them, right? That won't repent, that won't listen, right? And sometimes you get aggravated because you know, some of these people, you know, you, you care for them, you love them, you know, they're your family members in, in some cases, right? And you see the way that they dote over these celebrities, you know, people are tripping and falling all over themselves to, to want to be like Beyonce and Jay-Z or whomever. Uh, I just mentioned her. Uh, Alicia Keys and... and, and uh, whatever her husband's name, Swiss Beats or whatever is, I guess they still married, I don't know. Okay, but you get my point. People are worried about being a celebrity. And them celebrities are being taken out. Okay, but it's all because of what? This wicked society, this Got everybody all in a frenzy, okay? Except what? For the elect of the most high. And that's why the men do the work. That's why the men preach to, through the spirit of the Lord to draw them out. Hear this word and change your course, right? Change your life. Get hold of eternal life, okay? Because this world is temporal, it's passing by. You gotta be able to see it. You gotta be able to recognize it. 
and Salakia, if my if if it I gotta check this battery. If if it goes down, I, I'm still gonna post the video, okay? It's kind of cold out here, and usually, if it's cold enough or if it gets real hot, you know, the battery uh, charge doesn't last as long, okay? And this is the this is all I got, so we 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 make it work, okay? So if it, if it gets ready to go out, you know, I shut down and and post what we have already, okay? And it's cold out here, so you know, there's a few people out here riding their bikes and running and jogging and all that, but whatever. Getting back to what I was saying, you got these people who are in control, who've been lying to the whole world, okay? About who we are as a people, right? and uh, lying about who they are, right? And all these other nations have come together, what? To fool or to trick the entire world. But see, you know, that was, that was the Heavenly Father's plan. You know, everybody's playing their part, okay? So let's read a little bit of, uh, we'll read the first we read the first five verses of uh, Psalms 83, okay? Psalms 83, starting at the first verse, it reads, Keep not thy silent, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Yeah, and pride, those that hate the Most High, have conspired against the Lord's people. The Lord and then his people, okay? And their minds they have, you see? Yeah, I think it's starting to go down too. <laughs> All right, we'll keep going for a little bit. Uh, verse one again, keep not thy silent, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? We're no longer hidden now, right? We're out in the open, right? The world knows now that the Negroes, so-called African-Americans, blacks, coloreds, right? So-called Puerto Ricans, right? so-called Native Americans, hatchet heads, savages, right? Spinks, beaners, Mexicans, right? All these weird, crazy names that they tagged on us. They know now that it's out in the open that we are the true children of the Holy Bible. We are the chosen people of the Most High God and it cannot be hidden anymore. Why? Because it's time, right? Start way back, uh, which is not really way back because it's not ancient, 1960s, right? And you had the, the teachers of the apostles of Great Millstone, you know, uh, King Marshall and uh, 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 Abba, Abba Bivens and so on and so on, right? Their teachers who taught them. And now these men, have taught us, okay, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? Because it's time. The nigga preacher, the day of the nigga preachers, it's gone, okay? The day of the nigga preacher preaching with sweat rolling off of his brow and spitting and hawking and, and, and hemming and hawing and stomping going across the floor and shouting the handkerchief head preacher. That day is gone, okay? And the gospel is out in the open now, you see? And that tells you that we're closer than ever before to our salvation. Chariot sightings all over the place, right? All over the country. Right? 
all over in Europe, what have you, down in South America, so forth. Not one or two, hundreds, thousands, popping up, showing up, okay? So you're closer than ever before. We are closer than ever before. And we give all praise to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, right? But we can see it and we understand it. And we, we, the Lord tell you, don't be, you know, be anxious for nothing, but we want to get out of here. We don't like this place and we want to get out of here just as, as soon as possible, okay? Let's see, let's see what else we can get. Yeah, let's uh we we'll read uh it's like we we'll read uh Isaiah 33. We'll jump right in there and read the first read the first six verses, right? Woe to thee that spoileth, and thou wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And these are, this is for the enemies of the Lord, right? When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. Verse 2, O Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh be gracious unto us, we have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of thyself, the nations were, were scattered, and your spoils shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar, as the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. Verse 5. The Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahushai is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Verse 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahushai is his treasure. You see? So we looking for the Lord to deliver us, and this word will be in us is going to keep us stable we're going to recognize the things that's going on when the time of trouble comes we're going to know these words okay through the spirit and it's going to keep us stable in the truth all right and the lord is our salvation point blank okay Let's see here. Yeah, I think pretty much that's it. Let's uh, get a 
scripture to close on. Trying to see where I want to go here. Hold on just a second. It's locked. I think I'm going to go to uh, Galatians chapter 5 and jump in at uh, verse 22. I jump in at uh, verse 5. This is Galatians chapter 5 and 5. And it reads, for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, right? That's what we're waiting on, right? And our faith is carrying us through, okay? Because you got to have faith to believe in this gospel. Verse 6, for in Yahweh Shah Mashiach, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Right. Speaking to those that now they, some in those days began to doubt. Okay. Again, this is about faith. Verse 8. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be and i brethren if i yet preach circumcision why do i yet suffer persecution then is the offense of the cross ceased i would that i would they were even cut off which trouble you for brethren ye have been called unto liberty right through faith we have liberty Okay, and during this time, there was somebody that was troubling the new saints, confusing them, okay? So Paul has to write a letter and give them some confidence again, okay? And tell them don't be twisting and turning in your mind, so to speak, about what you believe, okay? Because somebody tried to sow seeds of doubt, okay? I would they were even cut off which trouble you for verse 13 for brethren ye have been called unto liberty only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself okay that was verse 14 so when you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not gonna to try to hurt them. You're not gonna to try to steal from them. You ain't gonna to try to murder them. You ain't gonna to try to commit adultery with their woman or what have you, okay? So on and so on, okay? And that one commandment, you, you got all of them. So you, you know, it's just that one commandment it's compacted, it compresses the commandments that we read in uh, Matthew 19 that Yahweh Shah told that young man to keep, right? So that's what's meant by that. Well, the Christian tells only two commandments. They don't understand it. Okay? So with that, we're watching the world. We, we, we see what they're doing. Okay, we haven't lost any faith. We're not gonna lose faith or hope, right? Because wisdom and knowledge is what? Be the stability of our times. And we're not shaken by any of this stuff that's going on, but it is to say this. Those of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and you haven't repented yet, 
and you see all this death and destruction that's going on, what are you waiting on? You're gonna wait too long. And who knows? Someday they'll be scooping your brains up off the ground with a shovel or you'll be burned to a crisp in an airplane crash, right? Okay? You might be an expert swimmer, right? You may be some celebrity rap star. You're an expert swimmer and be swimming off the south of France and drown. You see? The most high is bad, man. Okay? He's bad. Okay? He can get you any way he wants. And as the scripture also says, hey, because of the terror of the Lord, we persuade me. Right? Talking about our own. To repent. All right? And come back to the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High God. I guess that's really going to do it. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what the week brings. Okay? Lord willing, the Most High will keep us until it's coming. And if we shall meet again next week, then that's what the Lord wanted, right? So with that, I'm going to give all praise to the Most High. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rekakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone for teaching his truth all around the earth. Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. Okay? And uh, we'll see you real soon. Okay? Lord willing. All right? Shalom.